Okay, so what we're gonna do here is continue to practice our aseptic technique. And so we need to start using our Bunsen burner again. So for that, a reminder, we need to make sure that this guy is always nicely closed. We inspect our line, which you may not be able to see completely here, but making sure that it's intact, that there are no breaks or kinks or bends or anything like that. So make sure it's nice and complete. And so we're gonna make it run. So this guy is the one we just used to prepare our auger plates. So all we have to do, open this bad boy up, you can hear it, have this guy ready, there it goes, and then just touch it, and there's our flame ready to go. Now we're not gonna use it with the water in this case, so we're actually gonna take it away a little bit. So we're gonna mess with it over here. You'll notice that it's fairly large, so we're gonna actually close the amount of gas that we have in there to control that. That's the easiest way to do that adjustment, or we can do it from the bottom valve, but we don't need to do that. So let me adjust this so you can actually see this a little bit better. And there's our nice neat little flame and so what we want to be able to run a sterile environment is that two cone system so we're going to add oxygen to this by opening up the valve and you'll notice that it'll change color you'll hear it actually change in sound and then you'll see visibly the two cone system okay so I'm actually going to turn off the light so you can actually see this a little bit better. So you can see the two cone system. And the idea is we want to use the inside of that cone, the tip of that inner cone, to actually do our studies. All right, so we're going to use our loot just these guys that you guys get provided in your drawers. It has that little loop at the end. And so what we want to do is sterilize the first two inches or so that are exposed. And it's done by holding it at a 45 degree angle and passing it through. You'll notice that this color changes dramatically. And we do this relatively quickly. And we do it about two times maybe. So we do it again and that's it. But now we have to let it cool down. It's so hot that anything we touch will be automatically destroyed, incinerated. So we have to let it cool down. So the important part here is that you need to let it cool down for about 15 seconds. So you need, want to count in your head. You don't really want to count out loud because you're actually technically blowing air onto it. And then you're contaminating it again, which defeats the purpose. So on your head, silently, count 15 seconds or more until it cools down. And this is the guy we'll use to transfer our samples and our aseptic technique. That's at least the plan. So right now, we'll repeat it again two cone system, the tip of the system, pass it through once, twice, and we let it sit there, 15 seconds. Now again, you don't want to waft it around. Obviously you're picking up more particles, so just sit there nice and quietly. Uh, the easiest way I usually do this is kind of keeping my elbow at the bench. That way it stays nice and stable. That way I'm not kind of moving around or swifting around, okay? So I'm gonna do this first. So now that we have an idea on how we're going to keep our inoculum, our loop, nice and sterile, we're going to actually start practicing what we're going to do in the transfer. So here we have one of our samples that we're going to be using, or at least an example of a sample. It's usually in a slant. You can actually see the growth on it. It's like this little pale white sheet on it. You'll usually find these in these cool little cages in the middle of your bench, so you should have access they're usually labeled clearly for your use. Now the idea behind the aseptic technique is we want to transfer that guy or any other organism safely without aerosolizing it, without breathing it in, without contaminating yourself or others, or including your samples, from one place to another. And so the three tests you're going to be doing is taking your sample and transferring it onto a broth or liquid transferring it onto another slant and then transferring it to one of the plates you just finished creating. So that's going to be the short and quick version. So what we want to do is use our Bunsen burner, sterilize this guy, wait to 15 seconds like we discussed before, and then transfer from point A to point B. Now as long as you have the system down, the key feature here is to not forget your steps. So what we want to do is have our sample ready, 
have our destination ready. So in this case, we'll start off with the graph first. Get it out of the way. And transfer from point A to point B. Once this is done, you can do it again from point A to a new point B, which will be the slant. And then one more time from point A to this case, a point B. And you'll be done with all three for experiment one. All right. So it can go relatively quickly if you plan this ahead and you have your setup ready to go. Now, ideally, you want to make sure again that everything's sterile. So again, this is where the Bunsen burner comes into play. And more than anything else, we want to make sure that our tubes and our samples are sterile. So I'm going to use this one as an example. So we're going to open up our flame really quick. I'm going to tone it down just a little bit because it's getting kind of crazy. And again, you want to see this two cone system that we have here. So ideally, again, twice at a 45 degree angle and then just hold it there. I'm talking simply because I need to be able to describe this video. But ideally, you just keep it there nice and solid 15 seconds. And this guy then is ready to use. But what about your tubes? Technically, anytime you open these guys, you're exposing them to the air, especially if you leave them straight up. So we handle these guys at a 45 degree angle most of the time so that they don't spill, nor so they are fully open towards the top. So what we do is we learn how to hold these tubes with one hand and then use the other to actually remove the cap. So this is kind of called a pinky technique in which you actually grab this guy with your pinky and then turn the tube and give it access. Now what we're gonna do to sterilize it is quickly pass it through once, twice to sterilize anything out there. Hypothetically speaking, this guy is sterile too and then you'd be able to insert it and pick up your sample. Once you're done, you have to sterilize that again and then you can close it using the pinky, pinky technique and then use this to transfer wherever you need to go. And then once you're done, again, two swipes at 45 degrees, make sure that the actual uh, loop itself penetrates the inner cone and gets this cool, nice little toasty version. You don't wanna leave it too long there because then you actually start bringing them out. So we're gonna run the practices in the next little step. So the idea here is to be able to run them all sequentially in one shot. So that's gonna be our next practice. So we're gonna run this transfer in real time. So this will take a little bit of time. You'll notice that I'm gonna be counting in my head, specifically so that the timer adjusts correctly. So you'll be doing the same thing. So now I already have my flame up and running. I already have my setup and my organizer. So what I'm gonna do this is continue to do this, making one exception that I'm gonna be talking through this. Ideally, you will be doing this without doing so. So I'm gonna sit here quickly, pass it twice, and let it sit there for 15 seconds. Now while that's happening, I'm gonna go pick up my sample, pinky technique, once, twice. Ideally now, 15 seconds would have passed, and then I'm gonna take my loop and just barely tap just on the surface of my sample, right? Making sure I don't touch the glass, I don't hit anything, I'm not running into stuff, I'm not wafting stuff around. So, what I'm gonna do is gently insert it, take a little bit of the sample, take it out, sterilize this guy again, pinky technique, and close it. I'll come back and use this guy in a second. And now I have sample on this guy. So now I need to make sure I transfer where I want it to go. So my first test is gonna be into bra, so same idea. Pinky technique, quick sterilization, and then the stuff that I already have growing on this guy, just into the loop, just shake it around a little bit, and I'm done. Sterilize again, pinky technique, and then whatever's on here, I need to destroy. And I can wait 15 seconds. Now this guy has been inoculated, and so now we can save it for later. Now we're gonna do it again. So this guy is sterile for 15 seconds. I'll take my sample one more time. Pinky technique this guy. Sterile. Pick up a little bit of the sample. 
Again, just a tiny little bit. Sterilize again. Pinky technique. Put it back. And now I'm going to pass it into my slide. Same idea. Pinky technique. Sterilize. And now what I'm going to do is a technique called a fishtail, in which I go almost all the way to the bottom. And then just kind of fishtail it all the way up. Sterilize. Close this bad boy and then sterilize this guy again too. Once, twice. Let it sit for 15 seconds. And now we have our slant inoculated, ready to go. Our very last one is gonna be our plate. So when this guy cools, I'm gonna pick up my sample again. Opening it up for the last one. Ready to go. Grab a little bit of my sample one more time. Sterilize this bad boy. Pinky technique it and close it. And now I have my plate. Now to actually demonstrate this one for the plate, I'm actually gonna do this on the side so you can see it. Technically you'd be doing this on the actual bench. So I'm gonna open mine up, which you shouldn't be doing. And all we're gonna be doing is just doing a large fish tail into this guy. Just kind of painting it down. And that's it. This guy's ready to go. Ideally though, I'm gonna make sure I sterilize this guy. Nice and well. And this guy is done. Our plate would be on the bench, and then you just barely open it up so that stuff doesn't fall on it, so it doesn't get contaminated, and clearly you're not talking like I am, and then do the little fish stick technique. And that's it. You have your plate. And now you have all three samples aseptically transferred from this guy, making sure we always sterilize before and after using our flame. Make sure that this guy is sterilized also before and after using our flame. And then we've transferred it to a broth, to a slant, and to a plate, all the while also sterilizing their environments. So this will be our lab number one. So we're gonna try this for a second time, just for good measure, so you can look at it a little bit more up close and I can show you certain uh, distances and certain actions. So I'm gonna turn on my Bunsen burner again one more time. There it goes. Let's switch it down a little bit, just so I need it. And now we're gonna have some close-ups of these guys. Now I put this from a distance so you can actually observe what I'm gonna be doing with this plate and what I'm gonna be doing with the sample. Now, ideally, to make sure you follow the pinky technique is that you'd hold the actual cap with your pinky and then you'd turn and open it up. Except that we're doing it with our dominant hand so we can use our actual loop here. So, again, we'll sterilize this guy. Again, 45 degree angle twice, making sure it penetrates the inner cone, the tip of the inner cone in this case. I'm just gonna hold this guy here. All right, this guy again, pinky technique. Close it around my pinky, turn. Sterilize it. Ideally, 15 seconds have passed, waiting for this guy to be ready. And then I'm gonna show this up close so you can see this a little bit better. Goes in, picks up just a little bit of the sample. Sterilize it again, pinky technique. Close this guy. Now we're gonna take what's on this guy and transfer it here. So now I'm gonna show it to you while holding it on the bench. I'll try and open this guy just barely enough. And then with this guy gently, just kind of do a quick fish tail and close it up. Sterilize, sterilize this guy really quick. Once, twice, done. And now, We've actually transferred the sample into this bad boy over here.